Now, as the highest mountain in Africa, the 6,000 metre journey up to Mount Kilimanjaro is a difficult undertaking for the most experienced hiker. But less than two years after losing her arm and leg in a horrific accident on London's underground, it's a challenge that Sarah de Lagarde, I hope I've said that right, <laughs> de Lagarde that right? has bravely decided to take on next month. Let's find out from her. Uh, we'll make her the first woman with a prosthetic arm and leg to complete the six day trek ahead of this huge challenge, and she's joining us now. Did we get Delagarde right? Delagarde. Yes. Yay! Yeah. 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 Lovely name. Thank you. Lovely so to meet you, to meet Sarah. You. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. And Sarah. thank you for sharing this story, because yeah. it's, it's, it is horrific. But I want to know, what was your life like before the accident? Who was Sarah? <sighs> I try not to think too much about it, because dwelling in the past is mm. not what's yeah. helping me. But I had a pretty, I would say, privileged life with four limbs. You know, I enjoyed um, sporting activities quite a lot. My family is very sporty. So, you know, archery, yoga, hiking and swimming. And now life is slightly different. So I had to you know, adapt to this new situation. How? I mean, we, we, if you don't mind, we do want to go back to find out how it happened. But mm -hmm. how, how, you obviously seem to be someone with you know, incredible sort of, you know, mental fortitude and very strong. But how long did it take for you to get your head around the fact that your life had to adapt and you, you know, you wanted to be that example to your children? Yeah, I guess, I guess in the, in the, the, the aftermath, the direct aftermath of the accident, I realised it quite quickly that, especially my arm was going to be a massive change. Um, but it took me a long time to just come to terms about, you know, how my life was going to sure. look like. And I still miss my arm and my leg every single day. Yeah. Um, you know, the prosthetics are great, but there are no replacement no. for your real limbs. Sure. So let's go back. It was September 2022. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened on that day. Where were you going? And tell us the lead up to what happened. It was such a mundane day, a regular Friday. I don't have a, a real recollection of what exactly happened that day, but I could piece it together. Um, went to work as usual, you know, stayed a little bit later because I had a project to work on and I wanted to make sure that everything was set for the weekend. Mm. I was meant to fly to Germany to see my dad for his 70th birthday. And then I went home, I, it was raining, couldn't get a cab as it so happens in yeah. London when it rains. Mm -hmm. And then I took the split decision to take the tube which was, you know, that sliding door moment. Sure. Um, I was tired. I had COVID the week before, still recovering. And, you know, the warmth of the tube. And I fell asleep. Yeah. So what? So then did you wake up, change tubes and go back? Or that's, that's where it happened? So you went exactly. past your stop? I went past my stop and then exited the train at High Barnet, realised that the same train was going to get me back mm -hmm. um, to Camden, where I live. And, you know... That's when it happened. I so slipped. Was you rushing to get back to the train? Not really. I think I just stepped out and turned around and wanted to board the train again. And then I slipped on a wet and uneven platform and fell against the stationary train into the gap oh that was, must have been, you know, as large as my shoulders. And there's no one else there? Well, there were people there because it wasn't that late on a right. Friday, but nobody heard me. Nobody, nobody saw noticed me. you. Oh, wow. no. And so the train departed and crushed my arm. And I remember that moment thinking, OK, oh well, gosh. that's not good. Um, there was an intense flash of pain. But luckily, um, our bodies are quite amazing. So adrenaline kicked in and the pain was manageable. But I needed to get out of there. My, I, I had a, a vision of my kids' faces in my mind's eye. Yeah. And I could hear their voices so clearly saying, Mummy, what are you doing? You're supposed to come home. And that's when that hysterical strength kicks in and you're like, OK, I'm, I'm not going to die here. But then you get hit by another tube coming in. Yeah. So I was on the tracks for a good 15 minutes and then the second train came into the station and claimed my leg. And no one oh heard gosh. you at all. And no one saw me. I was wearing this bright pink coat and you know, I've got this white blonde hair and someone... Sometimes you can't speak either because you're in shock. No, I was screaming. I was screaming for help and... So eventually somebody heard me and it's, you know, I, I think it's a miracle that somebody oh my God. heard me and then, you know, extracted me that the, the emergency services arrived, they extracted me from underneath the train and that's how I got saved. Do you remember this? Parts of it, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah parts of it. I must have slipped in and out of consciousness. Of course, but, yeah. But I was determined 
I was not going to die that night. And you didn't. I didn't. No, I'm you here. Didn't. Okay. <laughs> well, so that, the, the NHS kicked in oh and gosh, did yeah. so much for you that night. That you went straight into surgery. Yeah. I mean, when you wake up the next day and then you've got to come to terms with not only losing an arm, losing a leg as well. Yeah. I mean, what other thoughts do you have? You, have you by now spoken to your family? Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the aftermath is quite surreal because, you know, you, you have medication, so you don't completely panic either and you don't feel that much pain but all of a sudden you realize my life is going to change forever i how how do i walk when i only have one leg yeah. how do i grab things when my dominant hand sure. is no longer there so it is a really surreal moment but at the same time i was so intensely grateful to be alive yeah and it's so powerful that feeling to 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 think i can still be a wife to my husband i can still be a mother to my children that's Amazing, yeah. in a way. So you've done Kilimanjaro before. Yeah. Uh, you know, my wife's been up Kilimanjaro. She filmed it. It is not easy. And it's kind of, it's quite beguiling Kilimanjaro, isn't it? Because it's yes. just, it's such a slog to get there and you have to walk deliberately so slowly and the air is so thin and, yeah. you know, sometimes it's just a lottery if you can make it up or not. Yeah. How was the first time you went up there? So the first time we did an eight-day trek and it was tough for sure and everything you just said is is true that you have to walk really slowly to preserve your energy and um and the lack of oxygen makes it feel like you only have one lung to get up there um but i was so intensely happy and it was the moment i mean it was a dream my husband and i had for 10 years in the making and finally we got to do it post covid and all of that yeah. and i was so happy and I felt in control and strong and, believe it or not, at the top, I felt I'm invincible, nothing bad could ever happen to me. Oh. And then Sarah, a month when later... You, when you get to the top, it's... Correct me if I'm wrong, you start out at kind of the middle of the night, don't you? You're coming into... So you almost always get to the top as the sun rises, is that right? That's right, yes. Right. And it's... I mean, what a moment that is. Magical, unbelievably beautiful. But it was minus 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah. It was so cold. The water in our, in our water bags froze. That's how cold it is. But... But yeah, it gave me that intense feeling of achievement. But it that's was what I love about your story is now you're going to go back and you're going to go back and you're going to take your kids to show them what's possible, right? Yes. For me, it is important psychologically to close the loop on the story. You know, it's going full circle. But also, I've talked to my children so much about it that I wanted to show them that life can be really tough. Things get thrown at you all the time, but if you have the right positive mindset and you're kind to people and they come together and support you, yeah. then anything is possible. Brilliant. And that, I think, is a good life lesson for them. Absolutely right. what, a, what a lovely story. And I'm sure, obviously, you are climbing Kilimanjaro, but the climb to recover it from what you've been through must have been maybe even worse than that. Yeah. So I, I joke about this saying that I've been climbing the highest mountain ever <laughs> for the last 18 months. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah, and six days are going to be... Manageable, I, yeah. I hope. <laughs> oh, it's uh, so lovely. Tell us a little bit about the charity you're raising money for when you go. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm raising money for Stand. We Walk Together. It's a charity that recycles um, prosthetic limbs and educates uh, clinicians in uh, third world countries, developing countries and conflict zones. And I'm so grateful that the NHS has helped me, that the private sector has helped me so much. I've had access to all of this yeah. care but not everyone has. And so, you know, it's no longer about me. The, the limbs are never going to grow back, yeah. but if I can make a difference to somebody else by, you know, raising awareness, um, improving visibility and say, you know, if you are disabled, doesn't mean you can't contribute positively to society. Such an inspiration, Sarah Dilla, <laughs> God, you are amazing. Thank you it's so much so for lovely to your meet story. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank lovely you so to meet you. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say thank you for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. Now, listen, we upload new content every day, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the morning.